the uh, routing is a bit tricky, but uh, we'll cover it, uh, you know, uh, fairly fairly quickly. And uh, the routing uh, can be peering between of the nets, or it can be virtual uh, network gateways, which are basically your VPNs. Now, your peering can be quite fast within a region, up to 30 gates. The latency and the throughput are determined by the VMs. Uh, but there, it really doesn't support transitive routing. There's no DGP. So these peered VNets will learn about each other, but they won't learn about other uh, VNets if you have a chain of peering. And uh, the virtual networks are much more uh, uh, flexible in that they have to be GP. Now, um, the, uh, the virtual uh, network gateways include VPN gateways, uh, which is uh, what you sort of typically think of. But there's also something called an express route, which is a dedicated uh, gate uh, network connection, either from your uh, on-premise or uh, from a provider, which is called an exchange provider, to uh, Azure. So this is your dedicated uh, fiber to Azure. But other than that, they behave in the same way. And uh, there are a couple, here's an example of things that's not so easy. Uh, you can't really find in the portal. You can run these commands to um, see what this routing looks like. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at the BGP communication. So as far as the transitive routing is concerned, uh, the idea is, Peering, they can route to each other. But you're not going to be able, through peering, to connect these two spokes uh, through the hub. That's where the limitation will come. So we, you'd have to make VPN connections. However, you can use the gateway of a peer. So these guys, these spokes, can get out can communicate with the Internet. They're going to learn the routes from your on-premise. And um, you'll, you'll get this kind of communication, but you won't get the interspoke communication without peering, which is unscalable. So what you would have to do is either use those VPN connections or set up some kind of a VM, some kind of a router or firewall for the interspoke communication. And um, NAT gateways basically uh, are basically like a NAT firewall for outbound traffic. You don't really need those because uh, your public IPs that you assign to VMs will automatically be NATed properly by Azure. So, but this is sort of something extra you can do. You get a little fancy by having little, uh, you know, by having uh, uh, these pools of IP addresses up to uh, 16 IP addresses. And uh, route tables, again, you don't need them. I'm not using them uh, today because everything that we need to do, including inter VNet routing, can be done with the uh, implicit routing provided by Azure. Uh, but these can override the implicit routing. And you can, say, uh, you can choose subnets and say where you want it uh, routed, to what virtual network gateway, just send it to Azure, well, that was already implicit. Yeah, but if you had a subnet that you were sending somewhere else, you could make a smaller subnet and say, no, I want to go back to the default behavior for that. Uh, and certainly you can send it to uh, virtual appliances. So in the next session when we add firewalls, we're going to have to create these uh, what are called UDRs, these route tables, in order to get things to go to the firewalls rather than for Azure to simply route them. 